Last night, we saw Thor Love and Thunder, the newest MCU movie, and the fourth Thor, for some reason. Connor, what's the plot of Thor? Love Thor Thunder. takes place after Endgame. Thor is going around the galaxy with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and he's just living a sad existence since he broke up with Jane or since Jane broke up with him and all his friends died horribly in Thor 3. When, meanwhile, Gore the God Butcher becomes Gore the God Butcher by getting the Necro Sword. Um, so they have to travel around with his ex-girlfriend Jane, who's now Thor as well, because Mjolnir decided to make her Thor. So Valkyrie, Thor, and Thor go on a mission to save the stolen children that Gore the God Butcher stole. And things happen. And comedy ensues. Things do happen. So Aiden, what did you think of Thor Love and Thunder? Uh, I don't know kind of not feeling it. It's, um, to put it in so many words, it's Reddit. It's Rick and Morty, but Thor is the main character. He goes to wacky planets and they whoopple up a dub dub and they, there's violence and then he leaves and goes to a different one. And, uh, the, the humor is, they play 80s music and Thor is a boomer, I guess. He listens to boomer music while he kills people. That's the joke for like 90% of the movie. And the other joke is that they're screaming goats. Um, the movie can be occasionally amusing, but it's often not. Christian Bale is good as Christian Bale. He, he pretty much is just Christian Bale. Maybe a little crazy than the real Christian Bale, but not by a lot. Um, he's good in the role, but he doesn't do anything. He, he kills some gods, mostly off-screen. And then he kidnaps children, for some reason, to bait Thor into going to the Shadow Realm. And then they fight, and then... It all kind of just is what it is. The villain doesn't have anything to do after he kidnaps the children. Except for getting some decent fights, I guess. It's shot generally more interesting than most Marvel movies are, but as far as the plot and characters go, it's pretty... It tries very hard to be emotional with the love plot and the story is just more nonsense. Gunner, what'd you think of Thor Love and Thunder? Yeah, like you, I wasn't really feeling this one. Um, the first half of the movie wants to be a joke, a second comedy, and the humor lands about 1% of the time. There were a couple things I giggled at, but for the most part, it kind of just wasn't very funny to me. Yeah. Um, there were some cool action set pieces, but it kind of reminded me of, and it looked kind of like neon 80s. Um, it kind of reminded me of that movie Kung Fu. Kung Fury. <laughs> Kung Fury. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, at the start, especially when Thor does things like the splits to separate two oh, yeah. cars that come at him. Reminded me of Kung Fury. Yeah, that's um, definitely some Kung Fury shit. I didn't love that, especially when the tone tries to become kind of hyper serious at the end with the Jane having cancer plot and Gore losing his child and all that. Like, <laughs> yeah. There were parts, the tone was really bizarre because it was 
more serious than a lot of Marvel movies at points. And then it was also much quippier and supposed to be funny than Marvel movies. And it's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to make a more serious plot than most Marvel movies, or do you want it to be less serious? Um, it rings kind of hollow compared to, like, Thor Ragnarok, which had its funny moments, but was for the most part taken pretty seriously, or at least had a consistent tone. Yeah. Uh, where this movie's tone totally not very consistent. Um, yeah, it's totally not very anything. Gore the God Butcher could have been one of M the MCU's better villains. Like, he has some actually, like, moments that if I was a kid I'd be pretty scared by. Like, when he kidnaps the children. Pretty intense. And his army of evil demons, while a little generic, was well designed enough and kind of cool. But it all kind of rings hollow when he has nothing to do after he kidnaps the children until the end. Yeah. And his turn to the, I guess, become a good guy also rings sort of hollow. Because Jane... I don't know, I guess, like, they kind of lampshaded it by saying the sword was corrupting him. So the right. sword's gone. Whatever, I guess. Right, and the sword, yeah. It's a little bullshitty, but it is what it is. It's like, believe in the power of love. Cool. Um, so, there was the love through line, which Got mostly you. felt piled onto the second half of the movie. I thought the Thor and Jane romance was a little rushed. It when it fun. finally came to be a thing, um, Jane and Thor kind of just... They meet each other and then they're like, actually, we shouldn't have broken up. And then they're both like, yeah. And yeah, <laughs> there wasn't... <laughs> There's no, like, touch to their... It shows they, like, drift thing. apart because they both have, like, serious work to do and they're afraid to get close to people. Uh, because Jane's mom died of cancer and Thor is entire species gets wiped out yeah. but uh, when they meet up they pretty much immediately fall in love again and it kind of comes off a little like I don't know quick um, yeah I don't know I thought there was some cool action scenes most of the action scenes are actually really well done the planets are well designed but, like I said, tonally and from a story perspective, it rings kind of hollow, because, yeah. I don't know. The stakes just didn't really feel like they were there, especially when they kind of just kick Gore's ass pretty easily when they finally fight him. Yeah. Um, also, <laughs> well, they kick his ass easily the first time they fight him, too, and then he just leaves. There's also just a lot of traveling in this movie, which comes off as kind of pointless when, at the end of the movie, Jane is able to just teleport to the final battle. Yeah, seconds. they never, they're like, we need the boat to get around, but then... Because I don't understand how she got there. To the, I mean, they, she knew he was at the center of the universe, but they needed Stormbreaker because he has a Bifrost built into him. But Mjolnir doesn't have a Bifrost built into it, so I don't really understand how Jane got there so fast. Other than the fact that they didn't think about it, and it was just plot convenient for her to pop out of nowhere. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's a little awkward. Especially when, when two-thirds of your movie is our heroes trying to travel and find these characters. Yeah. Which also. they knew where the characters were. So in theory, Jane could have just got there in seconds. If Mjolnir is as teleporty as it turns out it is. Because they knew where he was the whole time. I do like Because this. of the children. Idris Elba's son. I do like that this movie continues with the long-held Thor tradition of terrible endings. Yeah. They, uh, they don't know where they're gonna go with Thor adopting Christopher Christian Bale's fucking kid, baby Thor. But I can't it's imagine it's anywhere meme. good. It's gonna be the next meme. I mean, I... If it wasn't so rushed... I actually 
didn't really mind that ending because it is good to have Thor, like, I guess the idea is Thor needs to live on so that he can, he found a new purpose or whatever after Asgard was destroyed and Jane died again. But it's like, you know that Thor 5 is going to be made by Taka Waititi again, and I no longer have faith that Taka Waititi won't just make it the biggest meme of all time. Yeah, like I, I well, only expect it to get worse. Every um, Thor movie has a terrible ending, so what can do? Yeah. I guess Brandon there were some... Didn't, but. I liked Korg in it. I thought it was funny when he was like retelling the stories of Thor. Yeah, Korg. And I thought it was really funny when the Warriors 3 died and he's like, people no one gave a shit about died. That was kind of funny, because no one gives a shit about the Warriors 3. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Overall, Thor 4 had its moments. It was totally inconsistent. It had an inconsistent plot. But, I don't, I don't know. I, I thought the performances were pretty good from Natalie Portman, Kristen Bale, and Chris Hensworth, like the, it was, they were having fun making this movie, but I just overall thought it rang kind of hollow. So Aiden, would you recommend Thor Love and Thunder? It's mid, I mean, it's more cape shit, it's mid cape shit. It's enjoyable enough, it's not very long, thankfully, relatively. Uh, so, like, I guess, yeah, it's it's fine enough. Connor, would you recommend Thor Love and Thunder? Yeah, I would recommend it to MCU fans. If, it, if, if you're not an MCU fan, uh, this isn't exactly one. This that one's I, pretty skippable. This one's pretty skippable. It wasn't exactly a standout for the MCU for me. Um, I thought it was okay at points, but for the most part the story was so messy that if you don't care about the lore, you're not really going to get a ton out of this. Um, if you liked memes, maybe you'll like it. If you love Rick and Morty. Uh, would I give it a strong recommendation? No. But like all MCU movies, it, there aren't very many MCU movies I'd say I'd give a hard not recommend to. Like, if you're an MCU fan, you're going to see it. Uh, if you're not an MCU fan or you're a casual MCU fan, I'd say it's pretty skippable. Yeah. They really wrapped up that whole Guardians of the Galaxy thing real fast in this one. They set it up to look like they're going to go on a bunch of adventures, and Thor's just going to be like a cast member in Guardians of the Galaxy, but then apparently they just changed their mind. And well, the problem is the if you the have... Like, bye. <laughs> The Guardians are relatively low-powered characters compared to a lot of, like, the Avengers. If you had Thor in Guardians 3, it would just be too OP to actually, like, make the threat work, so you kind of got to write them out. It was a cool idea to have Thor join the Guardians of the Galaxy, especially tonally how Taka Waititi and James Gunn are in a similar realm, but... It really logistically makes no sense from a story standpoint. It would be very hard to write a story where, because I mean, even this movie, the first scene is the Guardians of the Galaxy getting pinned down and they're unable to do shit and they're about to die. And then Thor just comes out and kicks everybody's ass. And that yeah. would be the problem. That would be kind of the problem with having him be a major player in Guardians 3 or I suppose so. them being major players in Thor is that they're. Too mm -hmm. underpowered. And he's too OP. Yeah, fair enough.